The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Grains, CNM Seeds, and Syngenta Canada. Find more episodes of The Wheat School by going to wheatschool.com. Hi, I'm Amber Bell, and this is Real Agriculture. I am here today with Kelly Turkington, who is a plant pathologist with Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada. And we are going to be doing a wheat school talking about Fusarium head blight. So welcome, Kelly. It's wonderful to have you today. Awesome. Thank you, Amber. It's a great day to have you out to the center. So, Okay, so we're going to be talking about Fusarium head blight today. What is it and what causes oh. Fusarium head blight. Well, Fusarium head blight is a is a fungal disease, and it's caused by a suite of different species of Fusarium, but the most important species is Fusarium graminearum. Okay, and what environmental conditions does it prefer? Well, it it likes somewhat warmer conditions, but mm -hmm. the big factor is moisture. So frequent rainfall, high relative humidity. And the temperature really ideally uh, for the pathogen is probably 20 to 25, but there can be some activity. And if you look at some of the forecasting systems, they look at a fairly broad temperature range. So about 10 C, depending on the system, to about 30 C. Once you get above 30 C though, it, it tends to shut it down, but it's really probably ideally that 20 to 25 C. Is so the, the western prairies right now, the spring that we've had has been pretty wet, I think, most yes. over. So we're pretty, we're in a position right now where it's... And, and what's happening now is the fungus is getting ready. So it it is starting to grow on the old infected crop residues, which is the key uh, uh, sort of source of disease within a field or in an adjacent field. It's starting to grow. It's starting to develop the fruiting bodies, the parathesia on the, the residue, and those parathesia then release the ascospores that actually infect the cereal heads when they come out of the boot. Okay, and then you said that, that a fungicide can treat it. Um, so obviously it would be too late in the season to apply uh, yes. by the point you really know you have it. Are you at high risk in future years then, the next time you go and plant? Like, should you be considering a fungicide then for the next? Absolutely, that's an excellent, excellent uh, comment. Like, uh, you know, the, it really, the, the risk is reflective of what has happened in the past. So mm -hmm. if you've had consistent issues with downgrading, rejection because of uh, dioxinivolo, nivolinol content in the grain and that could be wheat or you're looking at malting barley and it gets rejected for malting status those are all indicators that you've had an issue with uh, the uh, the particular disease one thing that might not necessarily be too uh, useful is yield because if you look at the experience that growers maybe in Manitoba North Dakota Minnesota have had even in the late 90s, uh, they were starting some of the initial work with fungicide. A lot of the yield response wasn't necessarily due to suppressing fusarium head blight. It was actually controlling leaf rust or tan spot okay. or septoria and, and so on. So often the big impact with fusarium graminearum and fusarium head blight is grade mm -hmm. and mycotoxin contamination. Okay, and what are some things that you see producers doing, like mistakes that they make when it comes to Fusarium head blight? You know, I, I would say, not necessarily mistakes, it is an extremely challenging disease to manage. And if you look at the experience that colleagues like Marsha McMullen at NDSU, who's retired now, has had, and others and her colleagues, they really came to the conclusion that a producer needs to use an integrated approach to try and suppress the disease, the downgrading, the dawn, as best they can. So that means trying to avoid continuous cereal productions, trying to have rotations with at least two years between non-host crops, um, looking at choosing a variety that has the best level of resistance. And unfortunately, an MR is usually the typically typically the best level of resistance that we have for, for FHB and dawn suppression. The problem is that level of control with that resistance isn't the same that a, in terms of what a grower would encounter with stripe rust resistance with right. an MR or an R or if you're looking at canola black lake. In, in the case of stripe rust or canola, that R is controlling the disease. You don't need to 
uh, spray a fungicide. Unfortunately, in cereals, and the breeders have done a great job over the last 20, 25 years, we're seeing continual improvement in reactions, so reduced susceptibility. But you need to complement that uh, MR rating and that variety with the rotation that I mentioned. And then the third factor is fungicide application. So you need to keep that in mind. It's a, it's a combined thing. Right. Well, that's really good information. So awesome. thank you for joining us on oh, Real Agriculture. Very good. My pleasure. Thank you. And that was Kelly Turkington on Real Agriculture.